And if I knew the trick I know now that I'm gonna explain in this video, oof, would this have been a nice shoe. Feet. <laughs> Love them, hate them, don't know how to draw them, and that's what I'm here for. So even though I don't know the complexities and the details of foot anatomy, I do know how to draw feet fast. And if there's one thing I'm good at, it's a shorthand. It's being able to grasp something in a really quick manner and really imply what the drawing is. And then after that, the rest is just consistency and practice. So let's look a little closer into like the practical foot drawings that you're already probably drawing. And we're gonna take a little bit of a deeper dive and see how we can elevate those drawings to make them a little more volumetric, to make them kind of better. So I know you know how to draw feet. Here are some of my old drawings. There's, you know, there's nothing really wrong with it. It's basically the, the right idea. You know, you have the heel, you have the top of the foot, you got your toes but there's just something that is a little bit off. This is a nice drawing, but the foot itself is, is opposite. If I understood that the foot pad was facing a different direction, then maybe this drawing would make a little bit more sense. These feet, I could tell that I was really not keen on drawing toes. I didn't know how it worked. I got no ankle monsters over here. And that top view of the foot is just non-existent. So in order to get good at drawing feet, you need to master these four simple topics. We're talking about simple anatomy, shoes, perspective and breaking the rules. Let's go by them one by one. You only really need to know like three major angles and then the rest is really just building upon that. From the side view, a foot kind of looks like this. We have the most important bits we have you know, the ankle. We have the heel, the shaft, and finally the toes. And when we break down the shapes a little simpler, it's very much a triangle. It's a triangle and then the ankle kind of sticks out. It's important to get that heel in, so it's not a flat triangle like this. It's more of a little bit of an angle of a triangle. And then instead of the point at the very end, you know, you flatten it out a little bit. And that's how you get a side view of a foot. Maybe you're doing front views like this with the toes, but actually a front view, you have a little bit more of an angle leaning to the outside of the foot. And if you really want to kind of look into the anatomy, we can think about the ankles with the outside bone a little bit lower than the inside bone so your bones are gonna look a little bit like this and then your, you know you have your toes then you have your ankle with your simple rectangle shape you know and if you're slightly rotating it maybe you'd see that heel and then you'd have every single important factor of a foot inside the frame so the third angle we have to learn is the underneath and that's the foot pad and the reason it's important to understand the underneath shape is because it's gonna affect the bottom line of your foot in every single angle that we're doing. So on the outside of your foot is a big flat shape and on the inside of your foot is this much rounder, more complex shape. Now, why is this important? Well, because in our side view, the outside has a much flatter shape going into the toes, while the inside of the foot is gonna be a lot more curved. And it'll be more prominent when we have three quarter front views where the outside is a little straighter and then the inside would be a lot more curved like this the bottom of the foot line is very rounded while the inside of the foot has you know you could see this inside shape a lot more and you know if i was actually doing a character design where we see you know bare feet in the shots i would probably just flatten this out unless you're drawing like tarzan somebody with really prominent and important like feet to their character doesn't really, you know, it's not really the star of the show and I have quite a strong suggestion of a barefoot. And our last important view is a three quarter. Now a three quarter front is pretty similar to the side view. It's just that we see a little bit more volume a little bit more of an S curve perhaps in that bottom line. So usually when I'm drawing a foot, like a bare foot, I draw a shoe and then I add lines or like I tighten in those pieces that should be definitely a little tighter to the skin. So like here, I would usually have a point if I'm drawing a shoe, but because it's an actual foot, I'm going to hone that in just a little bit. Maybe I'll draw a big toe just so we can 
see that it's a foot. It's fairly simple, three quarter front. Maybe I can do a shape, something like this. You know, I am showing you a little bit of a stylized version of my feet, because that's how I draw feet. It's not like exactly realism. Common mistakes in foot anatomy. Let's take a look at some of the submissions through my Discord, Andre posted, these feet. I call this the flipper feet. What's wrong with them? Well, you're forgetting about the shaft of the foot. Right now, this foot looks like it's completely flat in perspective. Let's say if this is the ground. What I do to fix this is just have that top part of the foot, the top triangle of the foot. Ooh, this delicious part where you could really define where the volumes of your foot is. I'd also consider instead of having flat toes straight across to have a little bit of roundness to it. See, I'm doing this outside foot. So then, you know, the big toe would be right here. And I would just suggest these toes just like that. It doesn't have to be hard or complicated. You know, if you wanna have that big toe shot, that, that money shot right there, you could do that as well. Another common mistake from Michael, and I could see it right here. And it is infinitely pointy feet. You know, and a little bit of it is personal preference. I like having this type of angle. And if you see my drawings of shoes, it's always angled like this. I love having it like that. I think that works nicely, which runs into my second point. Now, now, Michael didn't do that right here. You did something really good, and that is the ankle. And I'll never forget what made me ankle aware is when I was working with Corey Loftus on a project and I handed in all these turns and he really beat it out of me. He said, don't forget the ankles. And he drew all over my drawings to, to remind me to draw the ankles. And I was never so embarrassed in my life. Another common mistake in our front view, instead of doing this outward angle, I see people doing a very even shape, which is bad. You want to have a lopsided angle to your front view. You want to have a heel and you don't want to have pointy toes and you especially don't want flippers. So I cut it out of this video, but if you're interested in learning a little bit more details, a tighter look at the foot anatomy, I've posted the full extended version on my Patreon. So you can go and take a look at that full video that I posted there and where I've posted homework about this very tutorial. Wow. So when I'm doing shorthands of feet, bare feet, I'm focusing on that top arch of the foot. I'm focusing on the heel placement and focusing mainly on the indication of the big toe because that's how you can tell which one's your left and your right foot and focusing on that S curve on the bottom of the foot. It really helps with creating a really simple and stylized foot while indicating volumes, even with a back view. A back view is not that scary if you remember to create your heel, to create that S curve, create the, um, the top triangle of the foot and then add in the toes. And adding that ankle bone in is just that final indication of the direction of the foot. And because of my knowledge of that bottom foot pad, I can create any shape that I want with it. And we'll get a little bit more into that later. But let's take a quick break here and talk about today's sponsor. Wondershare's Uni Converter is a powerful conversion tool. It's a converter, a compressor, and has some really neat AI tools too. Let me show you something cool. So this drawing I have here is just a screenshot from my Instagram. If you look closely, it's super bad quality. It's low res, compressed, and grainy. So I'm going to use the upscale AI tool to not only make this better quality, but to make it double the size. So look at that difference. It's actually insane. Like this tool is so incredibly useful for artists. It can also enhance your image and turn black and white images into color. And did you know I screen recorded my entire video with Uni Converter? It's simple and intuitive. It records audio from your webcam or from your screen. Easy peasy. Another feature I find super useful to me is the video compressor. Oftentimes my video files are huge. This one's 2.4 gigabytes. I can keep the same quality, but squish it down so I can send it to whoever I need to send it to before uploading it to YouTube or Patreon. And I can convert my video into any other format with the click of a button. So try Wondershare's Uni Converter for free using the link in the description. Awesome, let me show you some more feet now. So we looked at the simple anatomy and now let's take a look at shoes. Now shoes is better than drawing feet. Shoes is way easier. You can simplify it a lot easier and you don't gotta draw the toes. My favorite way to draw shoes is just like this. Honestly, I love a good S curve. No, I love the point of the heel going straight into the back. It's really strong, really powerful. So I can create any shoe type that I want. So for the sneaker, for example, it's very exaggerated. It's very crazy. It's very rounded. You know, maybe I would draw a shoe like this, but for this shoe, 
It's really exaggerated in its roundness. And honestly, that's fine. You know, after you research what, you know, use a little bit of reference of what shoe you actually want to use, it's just throwing in details. You know, maybe if your foot is slender inside, you know, you have to consider who your character is. Like right here, we have a skinny ankle, but the shoe itself is nice and chunky and we can see that foot really sit inside. So think about your character, think about their personality and how their feet fit into their shoes. Now with this front view, you might see that I'm not doing that outside angle that I taught you earlier, but listen here, I have a reason. I purposely did that so the way that this character is standing has her foot facing in a little bit. So if the direction of her foot isn't perfectly, you know, a front direction, then maybe the shoe would sit like this. And honestly, this was a sketch from like last year. So <laughs> don't at me on that one. This is how I would draw now. <laughs> you can get really funky with how you draw your shoe. Right here, I have a really skinny ankle and I have my basic shoe shape. And instead of having an S curve, I have a really rounded shape. And then I play around with the heel and the front view of the shoe, you know, you could enjoy and play around with it. Like the front lip of it lift up a little bit. That's what I do in all my drawings. So then it would make sense that in this drawing, you'd see a little bit of the underside of that front view. I like that a lot because a real shoe would, you know, add a little bit of height to the character. You know, even if you have platform shoes, think about your character's foot sitting on top of that rubber sole. And you know, I didn't look up reference on what a boot looks like, but you know, the basic idea is that you can create any shoe out of a foot. And with a high heel, it's important to think about the foot anatomy underneath. So you still want your ankle, you still want your heel, you want you know, your main chunk of your foot, and then you want your toes to really fit inside. You know how I do it is, you know, I start with a wedge, and then once you have your lines created, and then your heel perspective will follow suit. You know, you could change the angle, and you always wanna make sure that the high heel is actually sticking out of the heel. Common mistakes I see in high heel drawings is when the big toe is really big. And I see that so often, and you can kind of see that I pushed my big toe a little further than where a big toe would be. So, you know, you gotta find a balance, but in general, the toes are such a small area of those heels. So when I draw the anatomy of this foot underneath, it's like, are the toes going all the way out here? Like, I hope not, that looks crazy. So just keep that in mind when you're drawing your heels. Okay, so we looked at simple anatomy, we took a look at shoes. Now perspective. It's been really hard to talk about feet and shoes without perspective. You know, in order to put your feet onto a character, you need to adapt your four basic front, side, and bottom views of your feet. So whether they're kicking or standing, there's only really a few foot poses that you need to memorize. And then after that, everything is just a variation of those couple foot poses. And that is your partial bottom and your pointy toe. Those are the only two poses other than your front, side, and bottom poses that you really need to know. Now, what is a partial bottom? I'll show you. This is a partial bottom. 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 Uh, well, that's, eh, it's not a partial bottom. Why do I keep saying partial bottom? It's anytime your foot goes up and you don't see the entirety of the foot. Like, yeah, you can show the foot going like this, but it's so much more appealing to see this shape. And this shape is basically a teardrop. And I do this in so many of my drawings. It indicates so much movement, a lot of volume. It's just impressive to look at. So with these feet right here, we basically have a side view of a foot, which is this basic shape. And then we have a partial bottom, which is kind of like a side view, but I'm just lifting that bottom ever so slightly. I'm pushing the heel back and then I'm working with the perspective. So we're seeing it a little bit from underneath. So I'm gonna round out the top of the shoe. The sole of the shoe is going to follow the bottom S-curve that we've created. And then all of my lines are basically gonna follow that upshot perspective. And then we have quite the dynamic foot pose. You could even rotate that partial bottom and you, we could see this angle, which is that same teardrop idea, but now it's from a different angle. So I really wanna make sure I'm following 
my basic anatomy. I'm creating the heel, I'm creating the top triangle of the foot, and then I'm throwing in that toe angle. You know, by putting these sole lines, I can indicate the perspective a little bit more. And by having these ellipses also face away from us, it's indicating, you know, the direction of the shoe a little bit. You know, this teardrop, and it's always an S curve. It's a type of S curve. We love an S curve. We have our heel, we have our top shape, and then we have our toes. It's really only three shapes. So I'm doing that S curve toe drop shape. I'm gonna draw where the ankle comes out of. Instead of the heel, you know, going like that perhaps, I've made this other shape to indicate where the heel is actually ending. And then we have our heel coming out of there. And then because it's this toe drop shape, I'm gonna follow that perspective. And then we have this underneath view of this shoe. So we looked at our partial bottom. Let's take a look at pointy toe. Pointy toe is what it sounds like. It's basically a high heel shape. You know, we have our top triangle arch, we have our heel, and then we have our toes. You can actually rotate this and we can do this from a back view. If we simply change some of the ellipse and the perspective lines. And now you actually have a base for running pose. So you have your moment before impact, you have your moment of impact, and then you have your push off moment. And those are all the basic poses that your character is gonna go through, unless your character is doing like stuff like this with their toes, right? So let's look at common mistakes with real life uses of, you know, feet and perspective and stuff. So oftentimes I see this mistake where the feet are not quite in the correct perspective. In in general, we want their heel to be in the same spot. So their heel would probably be behind and then their foot would stick like lower, like that. Another way of doing this, you know, basic standing straight pose, this foot right here, I'd angle it more inwards because I don't want to have, like, this, this is the top view. I don't want to have penguin feet like that. I want to have a much more natural pose that, you know, people in real life would probably have. You know, if they're floating, you still want the perspective the audience is seeing to be cracked. So like this foot's a little bigger than that back foot because if you see the whole drawing, which you know I didn't put in here, you'd see that this foot is a lot closer to the camera than this one. And this one's f falling further back in perspective. And that kind of pushes that angles towards, you know, the audience. So we took a quick look at perspective. Next, breaking the rules. So I've been talking a lot about rules. So take forth this knowledge of what feet can be and apply it to your own art. So thanks for checking out this little tutorial and I hope you learned something. Okay, but before you go, are you ready to travel to Japan with me? That's right, my group trip to Japan is officially launched. So from May 8th, to May 14th next year, you can come to Kyoto and Osaka with me to sketch, make new friends, and explore a new country together. So whether you're an artist or not, this trip is for everyone. I'll be hosting art workshops, I'll be having one-on-ones with everybody, and I have a little surprised gift for everybody. I'm excited to eat new foods at the Kuraman Market, go on a river cruise, have a tea ceremony, visit shrines and temples, and draw some deer. The price is $32.99, and what's included in that price? Accommodations, transfer between cities, a local guide, visiting two two cities, 10 activities, six breakfasts, and two group dinners. And there's a max of 24 people. Only 25% of the payment is required to sign up and there's payment plans available. I'm super excited to get to know all of you and honestly just like draw together. I love sketching in groups. So you can sign up through the link below. Okay, see you there, bye.